Baltimore is sometimes called the city of firsts. We are home to the first umbrella factory, the first monument to George Washington, unfortunately the first racialized housing covenant, but also the first desegregated schools below the Mason-Dixon line. In today's tour, I'm going to talk about Baltimore's role as the first hometown of the American bicycle. The first Velocipede was built in Germany in 1816. James Stewart, a Baltimore-based piano maker, was inspired by what had become a popular ride amongst German dandies. He manufactured his own version in 1818 and put it on public display in 1819. Many ridiculed the new two-wheeled contraption. Baltimore Heritage tells the story. The Federal Republican and Baltimore Telegraph sneered a curious two-wheeled vehicle called the Velocipede has been invented, which is propelled by jackasses instead of horses. Well, plenty of jackasses were up to riding bicycles, and still are. In 1876, the Baltimore firm of Timms and Lawford imported a number of English safety bicycles to exhibit at the Centennial Exhibition in Philadelphia. Baltimore writer H.L. Mencken got one, as did Babe Ruth. In 1936, Lucille and Samuel Davis opened a bike shop in the city and got a contract with the city to run a bicycle concession in Druid Hill Park. These are just a few of the major milestones in Baltimore's bike history. Learn more from Baltimore Heritage and the Maryland Historical Society, both linked in the description of this video. Now, I've been riding my bicycle around Baltimore since I first visited the city almost 10 years ago. I love riding a bike. It makes me feel free. I'm not alone in that feeling. Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton declared that, quote, woman is riding to suffrage on a bicycle. You can read more about the bicycle's role in feminism in the Atlantic article, How the Bicycle Paved the Way for Women's Rights, linked in the description to this video. For me, biking is my favorite way to get around because I don't have to wait for the bus or figure out where to park a car. I just hop on and go. And in a city as small as Baltimore, I'm never more than 30 to 45 minutes from anywhere I want to go. And usually I'm much closer. I even took my spouse on a bike ride on our wedding day. I also love riding a bike around Baltimore as a way to get to know this place. On a bike, you have to pay close attention to your surroundings to stay safe. And that means actually seeing the neighborhoods you ride through. When I see things I don't understand, like when a neighborhood changes abruptly in terms of tree canopy or housing stock or access to grocery stores, I ask myself why. Places are not as they are because of anything inevitable. Places are shaped by struggles over who has what kind of right to the city, and the streets themselves etch the city's histories of racism, civil rights activism, development, displacement, and so much more. You can see all of that from the seat of a bicycle. So how can you safely ride around the city? First, check out the city's bike lanes. You can find the safest routes using the Baltimore bike map, linked in the description to this video. My favorites are the protected cycle tracks on Maryland Avenue and Fallsway, the east-west lane along Center and Monument, the big jump connecting the Mondawmin and Remington neighborhoods, and the smooth ride along Route 40 on both Franklin and Mulberry Streets. No matter where you ride, there are a few main things you can do to maximize your safety. First, ride predictably. Practice riding in a straight line, even when glancing behind you. Being predictable is my number one safety tip. Second, ride defensively. Drivers and cars are in their own private universe and they often aren't paying attention, especially given how many drivers are staring at their phones. I'd love to change that behavior, but in the meantime, here's some tips to deal with distracted drivers. Make eye contact, signal direction changes with your arms, and use what I call my outside voice to communicate with drivers. Cyclists, like all road users, are most at risk at intersections. Be aware of drivers coming up behind you who might make a right turn in front of you when you're going straight. If you're making a turn, be sure to signal to drivers and look to all sides and, beyond, and behind you. Pro tip, keep your eye on the front wheel of the car stopped at the light or stop sign. Drivers often don't use their signals, but the direction of their wheels is a giveaway. 
ride with your full attention and assume drivers don't see you. Again, I wish it didn't have to be this way, but riding in the city means taking all precautions to get home safely. Third, make yourself visible, especially if you are riding at night. This means front and rear lights and reflective clothing if you've got it. There's so much more to learn about riding safely in the city. The two biggest things we can do to make it safer to ride, though, is first, to ride our bikes. The more cyclists are out there, the more everyone gets used to seeing us. Second, get involved with your local bike group and advocate for bicycle infrastructure for all neighborhoods and road designs that slow car traffic. In Baltimore, that means I'm a proud member of Bike More. We need roads designed for the safety of all users, bicyclists, drivers, pedestrians, wheelchair users, skateboarders, everybody. Now, get out on that bike and get riding. You'll love what you see.